Here is a quiz from lab, and I'm going to go over this quiz. So this is a lab on uh, air resistance. So what we did was we took coffee filters, and that's a coffee filter, and we dropped it, and then we, we measured the terminal velocity. So at terminal velocity, there's a downwards uh, gravitational force and an upwards air resistance force, and those two things would be equal, and it'll move at a constant speed. In this particular lab, we were modeling the air resistance force, the magnitude, as some constant, um, I'm just going to call it C times V squared, where that's a drag coefficient and all the density of the air and the shape and all that stuff, because we never change those properties. By stacking coffee filters, you don't change the shape, the, sh the size, you don't change the air in the room. So we can use this model. Oops, sorry. Uh, so in this case, in this quiz, uh, different stacks of coffee filters are dropped to determine the terminal velocity. So this is the mass of the coffee filters and this is the terminal velocity squared. What would be the terminal velocity for nine coffee filters? So, I mean, some people try to like just dot it out and say, okay, what's it gonna be? And, and I applaud that method, but, but really we, when we have a graph, we want to fit a line to that. Okay, so let's just see, at terminal velocity, like I said, these two things would be equal. So I have mg equals cvt squared. That's true at terminal velocity. And so if I am plotting mass on the horizontal axis, like my x value, and velocity squared on my y, I can say vt squared y is going to be equal to m, I'm sorry, g over c times m. And that looks like y equals mx plus b, right? The equation of line. So if I plot vt squared on the vertical axis, which I did, and uh, mass on the horizontal axis, which I did, then the slope would be g over c. And then we can use that to find the terminal velocity uh, for in nine coffee filters. So let's find the slope of this line. So the first thing I'm just going to, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to draw uh, best fit line. These these number these dots are pretty. Actually, I, I didn't put any error in them. I guess I did make the dots. <clears throat> um, you know, you can't just do. Well, you should never do this y value divided by x value because that's only true. That only gives you the slope if it goes to the origin. And we shouldn't use the points you use to plot to find the slope. So I'm going to pick some values over here um, and estimate their x and y values to find the slope. So let's just pick this right here, because that one I know is the mass of 0 0.008, and that's going to have, um, let's say that is 20, 27. So this is going to be uh, 0 0.00827, and I'm just guessing. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, then that's fine. Um, and let's pick, I know that point's right on, I shouldn't pick that point, but it, it's so tempting to not pick that point. You could pick any of these points, but that one right there I know, uh, the x value is 0 0.003 and the y value is 10. So that's good. Now I can find the slope. So let's find the slope. Slope is going to be the change in the terminal velocity squared divided by the change in mass, um, just like we have in this equation over here, right, for the equation of a line. So let's do the change in velocity squared. This is going to be 27, I've already squared it, minus 10. I'm going to leave off the units, divided by the change in mass, which is going to be 0 0.008 minus 0 0.003. So that's going to give me my slope. I got my handy dandy calculator right there. I don't really need it too much because this is going to be 27 minus 10 is 17. And 0 0.008 minus 0 0.003 is 0 0.005. I mean, you can put it in your calculator if you want to, but I mean, if you don't have to. So now, actually, I could do this too, but I'm going to 17 divided by, you can't see that, 0 0.005 equals 3,400. And that would have units of, uh, let's just write this as newtons per kilogram. And then C would have units of, um, C would have to have units of newtons second squared per meter squared. So it's going to be newtons second squared per meter squared. And that would be the units of the slope, the Newtons cancel. Uh, and I get, I think that's right. Okay, so that's the slope. Now I want to find C. So I can say slope equals G over C. 
So C is going to be equal to G over the slope. So it's going to be 9.8 divided by 3400. Let's do that in my calculator. 9.8 divided by 3400. I'm going to leave off the units because I don't want to get that wrong. 0029. Okay. Now, uh, I want to find the terminal velocity for nine coffee filters. So each coffee filter has a mass of uh, 1.5 grams. So at terminal velocity, mg equals cvt squared. Uh, so I want to solve for vt. vt is going to be the square root of mg over c. And so now m is going to be uh, the square root of 9 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. That's the mass, 9.8. I'm a little sloppy here, sorry about that. And then C of 0 0.0029. So let's put that in our calculator. So clear, I'm going to get uh, the square root, 9 times uh, 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. That's, uh, that's 1.5 grams in kilograms times 9.8 divided by 0 0.0029 close parentheses equals and I get 6.75 and let's just look if I square that I get 45 so you know that would be you know way up here on the graph where you can't see that okay so it'd be somewhere up here but it would be on that graph so that's how you find this terminal velocity. Hope that was useful.